Yo, what's good? My name is Reginald, aka the R Star, aka Mr. Straight Fire. And this is Unabashedly Reggie's reaction breakdown analysis. The Eminem's verse on Roars the Five Nines Caterpillar. Got looking at a tiller, a psychopath, the killer, the caterpillar. Don't tell me when I'm supposed to rap it in like Anderson Silva back when he snapped the shin in half and then had this shit hanging by a flap of skin after he tried to plant the shit back on the mat again. But I think when I rhyme in ink pen, I talk in a language I speak, it's my mind. Kingpin and penguin combined. Okay, before we start, remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and if you're on Facebook, go over there and like my page. You can find the link in the description below. And finally, if you want to support this channel, you want to support me, you want to show me your love, go over at patreon.com slash unabashedlyreggie. It's only a dollar, but it shows you support, and one of the perks is that when I do longer videos, uh, sometimes I'll cut them by a couple minutes, and I'll put them over there and put the shorter version on YouTube, but what I always do is that I put the full highlighted rhyme sheet on my Patreon page, so go over there. Let's go to the song. Caterpillar featuring Eminem was released on May 3rd, 2018 as the fourth single of Roars the Five Nines critically acclaimed album Book of Rhyme. It's produced by Symbolic One and Epic Pro. Fun fact, this is Symbolic One's third collaboration with Eminem. He produced 50 Cent's My Life, which featured Eminem, and he also produced the opening track of the Marshall Mathers LP2, Bad Guy. The concept of the song is this. A caterpillar is the insect that grows into a butterfly. And this phenomenon is used as a metaphor to describe the current state of the rap game as well as Royce and M. They see the new rappers as the butterflies and themselves as caterpillars. Today's new rappers get all the praise and shine, but people forget that for those butterflies to exist, you have had to have guys like Royce and Eminem to push the genre forward. So they are caterpillars and like fathers to the new rappers. And if we look at from Marshall's perspective, he got trashed and criticized for revival by fans and also by some younger rappers. So even if they disliked the album, they still could have shown respect because he's the caterpillar at the origin of who they are today since he's influenced so many rappers. In summary, this song is about the new generation needing to show respect to the old guard because they can still get smoked by real rap and they shouldn't forget, bitch, he wrote Stan. Look, simply put, this is a rapper's rapper track. Both Roars and M kill it lyrically. But for this video, since I know most of my audience are Eminem fans, I wanted to release this video as soon as I could, so I'm only going to focus on Eminem's verse. In the next week or so, I'll do one focusing on Royce's two verses. Back to M's verse. He picked up exactly where he left off with Chloroseptic's remix. You can tell that the anger caused by the negative reception on Revival is fueling him and has lit a fire up under his ass. And that makes for a great verse. And I love the flow too. It's more straightforward and not stop and go as he tends to do as of late sometimes. Dope verse, now on to the breakdown. There are many different patterns in this Eminem verse. As he often does, he switches the patterns every four bars or so. But he starts off the verse with a pattern around, well, Caterpillar. You're looking at Attila, the psychopath, the killer, the caterpillar. Don't tell me when I'm supposed to rap Attila, especially when your favorite rapper ain't even half a zilla. Savage still the tracks a banana pillar, tack of a silver back gorilla. Man, that's such a great accent with that at act sound, especially in that last line because of how close together they are. And just the rhyming itself creates a flow because I was just reciting it and yet I still had a rhythm. Great opening. Attila is a reference to Attila the Hun, who was a fearless ruler who fought against the Roman Empire in the fifth century before Christ. He apparently killed his own brother to gain power, so you could say he is a psychopathic killer. And what's interesting about the origin of the name Attila is that it's from the Gothic noun Atta, A-T-T-A, which means father. So this, is also, this also continues the theme being a father to these new rappers, something he'll play with in some of the next lines. Moreover, it's not the first time M compared himself to Attila in a similar fashion. He also does in Say What You Say on the Eminem show with when I was little, I knew I would blow up and sell a miller, grow up to be a dealer, go nuts and be a killer. If you saw the video for this song, when he says half a zil, a savage still, the word half a zil pops up. So that's a homophone that's hidden there. By the way, half a zil is a weight loss bill. Although, if you listen closely, he does say savage still. And in the line, don't tell me when I'm supposed to rap until, you can still detect the same hanger he had in that Chloroseptic remix when, where he went at all the people who crapped on Revival and said he should retire. Like I said, this whole verse is about the young kids needing to show respect to the OGs of hip-hop. 
And that last line is a cool wordplay around Banana and Silverback Gorilla. The Silverback Gorilla is the strongest primate in the world, so Eminem compares himself to that to show how great of an MC he is. And before that, he says the track's a banana peel. When you see a banana peel, what does it tell you? Somebody ate, right? So he's saying that he ate the track, meaning he killed it. And of course, he used a banana as an example to go with Gorilla. That is so much going on in just the first four bars. Damn, let's continue. You're having a little trouble fathoming this is actually happening. As you can see here, it continues with the ad ad assonance. Like Anderson Silva back when he snapped his chin in half and then had the shit hanging by a flap of skin after he tried to plant the shit back on the mat again. Anderson Silva is a Brazilian MMA fighter who had the longest title reign in UFC history and he's considered by many one of the greatest to ever step foot, no pun intended, in the octagon. But the moment M is referring to is the end of his rematch fight against Chris Whiteman on December 28th, 2013. And that's when Silva threw a kick that was blocked and it broke his shin bone which left his leg hanging. I'm not gonna show it, but if you want, you can YouTube it yourself if you want to see something really gross. Also. Silva goes with Silverback Gorilla. Moving on. Pat the pen, I'm baddie like eyelids when they blanking a lot. You copy me, but you're not. You can't be butterflies. My offsprings are just moth. I see that things. I'm a squash it and rip the wings off it off. The first simile, baddie like eyelids, is to mean that his pen game is crazy because baddie is a slang for crazy. And of course, when you blink, you are batting your eyelids. So that's what that line was all about. Again, as I mentioned, as veteran rappers, Ian Wars are caterpillars and the new generations are butterflies. But here he says that his offsprings are moths. Caterpillars can either turn into a beautiful butterfly or a disgusting and annoying moth that somehow finds its way into your house and you just want to squash that damn thing. But what I'm hearing here is that he subtly is saying that people who copied him and perhaps other white rappers who came up after him are not skilled enough and he just wants to destroy them. Therefore, they can be butterflies. He sees them as moths. So ring the alarm. That goes with that line in the hook. And when he says that, you can hear Royce in the background. Pull the extinguishers off the wall. Set the sprinklers off like Jada Pinkett and Queen Latifah. Here, the simile is with set it off like Jada Pinkett and Queen Latifah. That's a reference to the classic 1996 movie starring two legends. And it's not the first time Eminem references that movie. He also did in Murder Murder when he rapped Grab the tape from out the deck and off it out the window like the girl and set it off did. Definitely a movie worth checking out. Till the shingles come off the roof, we'll shout at the ceiling, slaughter owls in the building, middle fingers aloft. In those lines, he creates a lesco feel around house. As a shout out to Slaughter House, the rap group, which features Royce the Five Nine. Shingles, which are those tiles that cover a roof, ceiling, slaughter house, building, and he completes it with a wordplay and homophone. Aloft means something that is in the air, so instead of saying middle fingers in the air, he says aloft, but also a loft, which is a type of room, usually found in the upper floor, so that adds to the lexical field. Plus notice that shingles, roof, ceiling, aloft are all related to something that is high up, so he's subtly saying he's on top of the game. Slim, always brilliant. Next lines. Say what I think when I rhyme in ink pen I talk and the language I speak is my mind. Now that's a cool line. That refers to, the, to his I don't give a fuck attitude because he speaks his mind. And to him, not giving a fuck is a universal language. Plus ink pen I talk is to say that rap is, is and will always be his avenue to express himself. Kingpin and Penguin combined. Two comic books, villains, one from Marvel and one from DC Comics, respectively. Of course, Eminem is a huge comic book fan. Spit like it's king of the dot, a singular thought I think of will help you distinguish apart the frauds from the cream of the crop. King of the Dot is a rap battle league founded in Toronto, Canada. So by saying he's spitting like king of the dot, he lets us know that he's in his full battle mode with his verse. And that a singular thought I think of part is him basically saying that he doesn't even need a full verse to show how dope he is. Just one thought or one line can show his brilliance and set him apart from the rest. Hey guys, before we continue, just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so, like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you can, once again, go on patreon.com slash unabashedlyreggie to support this channel. It's only a dollar. Let's get to that hotness of a verse. Let's continue. Wait a minute, hold up like a flash card. Damn dog, is that copying or paying homage? It's sad because dad thought you to rap as a damn toddler. My dad is your grandfather. 
A flashcard is simply a card that you put notes on it, and sometimes when people study together, one person will hold the flashcard with a question in the front and the answer on the back. So that's why hold up like a flashcard. And after that, he asked if it's copying, which goes with the whole studying exam thing. And about that, I've seen people saying that he's dissing some rapper who made a parody video of his Trump freestyle, but I totally disagree. Very often you have new rappers who will copy an older rapper and say it's paying homage. So when it happens, M wonders if they are really being genuine or just biting his style. And really this line in the whole song is about people who've been influenced by Eminem and grew up on his music. The ones he taught the rap as they were toddlers. Yet, they have no skills. So he's disappointed in them. Similar to that Offspring or Moths line. Plus it's cool how he finds an elaborate way to just say he's sunning these rappers. If he's, his dad is their grandfather, well, it means that he's their father and these new rappers are his son. Cool way to say that indeed. I'll have to rehatch on you, come back as a black wasp, half yellow jacket you can't swat. Hatching is a process when an animal comes out of an egg or in this case an insect comes out of a cocoon like the caterpillar hatching to become a butterfly. But he wants to rehatch as a black wasp. Butterflies are pretty and peaceful whereas a wasp is gritty it can hurt you with its sting. And it's probably not a coincidence but in the next Ant-Man movie they'll introduce a new superhero called the wasp. On top of that yellow jacket with, was the villain in the first movie and given that Slim is a comic fan that just continues the comic book references. A Sasquatch dancing on top of an ant, trample it and stomp it, smash it and stand on it. Notice that there are irregular ant rhymes in this song, like can't swat. That's something that happens a couple times in the song. He does this, but the focus is really on the internal rhymes. And you have an alliteration here with the S sound. Sasquatch, stomp, smash, stand, and in the next line, stop. A Sasquatch, also called Bigfoot, is a mythical creature that looks like a cross between a human and a huge hairy gorilla. But the real image he's painting is how much he is crushing his competition. This monster is supposed to be about 9 feet tall, so the idea that a 9 feet tall beast would put that much effort into stumping an ant is overkill. But that's exactly the message he's conveying. Compared to his competition, Eminem is a giant lyrical beast. And I might add, with moths, butterflies, reatch, black wasp, and later on grasshopper, Eminem is continuing the insect theme coming from the title of the song. Damn it, I can't stop. The rap is a vag. I'm going in like a tampon in this bitch. It's a manslaughter. Okay, let me explain this line. A tampon, of course, is what women use when they have their period. So like a tampon, with rap being a vagina, he goes in, an expression meaning to go hard and crazy, so that's another play on the word. And a manslaughter is what happens when he goes in on a track, meaning that all the other MCs get killed. But the scene of a manslaughter is usually a lot of blood, so that goes with tampons and women periods. Gross, but a nice line. Stamping out grass hoppers, you can't be no rap gods. In fact, you're exact opposite. You make a whack song and can't hold a candle. But even Danielson, wax off, you jack offs. Need to come the grips like a hand job. The boom bap is coming back with an axe to mumble rap lumberjack with the hacksaw. Here, another couple of lines with a lot of homophobes in wordplays. The wordplays are around wax and masturbating. First, wax song contains a homophone of wax song and vinyl records used to be made out of wax. Plus you have the expression put it on wax meaning to record something. Then can't hold a candle is an expression meaning not being able to be on the same level but also continues with the wax theme because candles are made out of wax of course. So if you put those two together these rappers put it on wax, rec record music yet they have no skills at all. And Danielson is the lead character of the 1984 classic movie The Karate Kid. In that movie there's a scene where his mentor Mr. Miyagi, rest in peace, shows him how to wash a car and that gave us the famous wax on wax off line. Now if I bring it back, the new rappers can't hold a candle so they can't handle wax, yet even Danielson is able to by waxing on and waxing off, again playing around the concept of wax. And it's with that reference to the Karate Kid that he transitions into the next wordplay which is built around masturbation. Whacking off this slang for masturbating, so Danielson wax off hides the homophone of wax off. So that's why after that he says you jack off, which is an insult like jackass or asshole, but jacking off is also another slang for masturbation. Now with that in mind, look at this simile. You jack offs need to come to grips like a hand job. To come to grips means to face reality and to accept the situation. So the wordplay that easily jumps the mind when you hear it is grips and hand job, right? But he says come to grips because when you're getting a hand job, you're coming ejaculating to someone's grip. And guys, 
I apologize. I'm really sorry for all the nastiness in this video breakdown. But if you sue me, I'll tell the judge it was Anne's fault and he'll get sued. <laughs> now let me know if you, in the comments if you got that reference. All in all, Eminem is saying that those whack rappers better realize that real rap is about to come back and kill that mumble rap garbage. Let's continue. Now for the rest of the song, he's just talking shit. No, literally, he's talking doo-doo. So yeah, the rest of the song, he does a series of wordplay around shit, crap, poop, whatever you want to call it. Because when it comes to rap, he is the shit. So that's why I make it my duty for you to understand his greatness. Get it? Duty? Whatever. Let's take a look. Number one with my pencil and number twos because that's all I do with them. Poop is my pseudonym. Pencils have different grades to determine different things like the darkness of the writing and numbers are used to classify them. So Eminem is saying that his pencil are the type number two and doing a number two is a euphemism to say taking a crap. Therefore, since he's writing the best shit, his pencil have to be number two. Plus, he uses incorrect grammar by saying all I do's, but that's another play on the word deuce, which is also a synonym for crap. Poop is my pseudonym. Well, a pseudonym is a nickname, and as I've explained in previous breakdown, Eminem and Proof, rest in peace, gave each other the nickname of Duty. Again, another slang synonym for crap. On the jaw like a prostitute when I'm dropping a deuce and when I'm producing the lyrical bowel movement. Again, homophones, but this time with an expression. On the John means to be on the toilet doing a number two. But John is also a slang for a person using the services of a prostitute. That's why he's making a reference to both a prostitute and dropping a deuce. Now on to the final lines, let's talk more shit. These beats are like my saloons because these bars always got my stools in them. A saloon is a type of bar that you see in old west movies, you know, the ones with the doors like this. And in bars, the type of chairs alongside the counter are called stools. And another definition of stool is a discharge of fecal matter. Again, more shit talk. And I don't need Metamucil to loosen them. Metamucil is a medicine that helps with constipation. So what he means by that is that he's never out of ideas or having writer's block. He can always come up with the best shit. Moreover, loosen them also sounds like losing them. So the stuff he comes up with is so brilliant that they can't understand it. They are lost. Bitch shit is real like I poop Jerusalem. Funny homophone here with Israel and Israel, which is a country in the Middle East, and Jerusalem is its capital. So shit is real and poop Jerusalem. You get it? I'm about to go spin a cocoon that I'm cutting you from your mother's room that I'm flushing you. Of course, after all that shit talk, he flushes. Oh, he's so well-mattered. How nice. Thanks, Slim. Spinning a cocoon is what caterpillars do when they stay in that cocoon until they hatch and become butterflies. The meaning of that line is that with the verse he just did, he's about to go influence another young kid to rap. But before their career even start, he'll destroy them. Slim ends it with the meanest. Another dope-ass verse off the heels of his Chloroseptic remix, Dope Stuff, once again. That is it, folks. Another breakdown in the books. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell, go on Facebook, like my page, and like I said many times, if you want to support this channel, go on my Patreon page. All the links are below. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, my next breakdown will be Wars of Five Nines, two verses. But until then, this has been Unabashedly Reggie. Thanks. It's been real.